Hi Year 6, welcome to this week's science lesson which will be focused on the Linnaean system. For this lesson you are going to need your exercise book and a pen, pencil and a ruler. Our learn objective for today is to describe how living things are classified into groups. Some of the key vocabulary that we may come across in today's lesson are Linnaean, domain, kingdom, phylum, genus and species and we'll cover these as we go through the lesson. So last week we looked at classifying animals in particular looking at their similarities and differences to help you group them and this week we're going to be looking at a method that scientists use to classify living things even further into even smaller groups and this is really useful because it allows them to accurately identify groups and name animals into even smaller species. Without it living things could be classified and named differently by different scientists so they all use this one method so that they're all doing it in so in a moment you're going to be watching a short video clip which looks at classification in more detail and it focuses a lot on Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish, Swedish scientist and he believed it was really important to have a standard system of classification that everybody could follow. Um, at the time that he was alive there wasn't an agreed standard method so every scientist or every person was doing it in a different way and he wanted something that everyone could follow. So he collected and examined lots of specimens, over 40,000 of plants, animals and shells and he published his first edition of something called the Systema Naturae, where he described lots of um, the system for classifying lots of different living things. Um, over the next several years, Linnaeus continued to publish more and more editions of um, the Systema Naturae, and that's because it, it, he needed to include more species of living things. The more he collected and examined, examined things or found new species, the more he needed to update each edition. And then his 10th edition was published in 1758 and it was considered to be the most important edition that he did. So now that you've watched the video on Carl Linnaeus, you should now be familiar with the Linnaean system or parts of the Linnaean system. Now, as you can see in front of you on the screen, I've put the hierarchy starting from the top all the way down to the bottom. The domain part at the top of the hierarchy, that is where the majority of animals um, can fit into. So that's where you'll see most of the animal names. Then gradually as they work through the hierarchy, you'll end up with the genus and the species at the bottom. And that is where you get the Latin name um, for animals. And that is how they're generally shown in scientific documents or in scientific research. Now his original system was classified into the hierarchy, as you can see there. And he said there was three large groups and they were called kingdoms. And he said that all of nature could fit into any of those three kingdoms, which were plants, animals and minerals. And then he split the kingdoms into smaller and smaller groups um, or even smaller levels. And the Linnaean system now is only used to classify living things, so we don't include minerals anymore. And then as new living things have been discovered, scientists have had to add more levels in the hierarchy. So a new level above kingdom is called domain. And that has been introduced over time also due to the new exploration and finding of more living things really. So let's have a closer look at the Linnaean system here. You can see the hierarchy again. So we've got the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Now at the side in brackets sometimes you'll see the Latin name for those words as well. Now the number of living things in each group gets smaller and smaller starting with the domain at the top until right at the bottom there'll be just one type of animal in the species group. So here we have an example of a species that has been classified. We start with a lot of living things at the top in the domain category and as it gets further and further down the levels at the bottom you have the genus and the species. So here as you can see, the genus and species are always written in italics and the names of the genus and species are used, used to give the scientific name, the recognised Latin name of each living thing. So the scientific name for a dog is Canis lupus and that is how it will be written in documents. For your activity this week, what I would like you to do is to classify some species for me. Now on the screen in front of you, you can see eight different species. Now you're not going to be using these ones, I'm just going to pick one of these as an example. But as you can see on the right, I've chosen a ladybird to classify. Now, don't worry, I don't expect you to know all these names in your head. I had to go and research them to find them out. So you can see the hierarchy there, the Linnaean system, starting with the kingdom at the top, going all the way down to the genus and the species. So we've got the Latin names going all the way down. 
Um, and then at the bottom, I'd like you to write in your exercise books your final scientific name of your chosen living thing, bearing in mind that you just use the genus and the species for the scientific name because that's how they are written. So my scientific name of my chosen living thing, which is the ladybird, is a hippodamia convergence. That is the scientific name for a ladybird and that's how it would be seen in scientific documents if they were being discussed by scientists. OK. So for your activity this week, what I would like you to do is choose three of the living things that are on the screen in front of you. Then I'd like you to use the Linnaean system to classify uh, to classify them into species. So you will need to go and research them. I don't expect you to have the answers in your head. I'd like you to present it like I did on the last slide with the name of the living thing that you have chosen. So, for instance, giraffe. Then I should see either a table or it written in the order of the Linnaean system with the Latin names. And at the bottom, underneath your table, I'd like you to write the final scientific name that scientists would use when talking about the living thing that you have classified. Don't forget to find the scientific name. You're just using the genus and the species um, in, from the hierarchy to write down. On the next slide, you will have a challenge activity, which are three questions based on what we've looked at today, based on Carl Linnaeus and the Linnaeum system. And when you've completed activity one and your challenge, please upload it to Seesaw so I can comment on it. See you later.